All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick's Running Power. So one of the things I want to talk about today was giant killers in bodybuilding. So these would be short bodybuilders or relatively small bodybuilders in terms of height and stature that would do extremely well in a men's open bodybuilding lineup against guys much bigger and much taller than themselves. Now, this is something we don't really see too much today because we have so many divisions in the IFBB now um, with classic physique men's physique, 212 division, and men's open bodybuilding. We rarely see a short guy come into men's open bodybuilding and beat a bigger guy. Um, and that's kind of what's led to now um, the direction that bodybuilding is going in terms of the biggest guy, the freakiest guy, is usually the winner. So they're looking for more muscle mass over the smaller guy with better proportions, better symmetry, better conditioning. We don't really see the guys like that um, win big shows like we used to see. So in this video, I wanted to cover my top four guys um, that were giant killers of the golden era of bodybuilding and a little bit more um, into the 90s as well. So the first guy I want to talk about was Franco Colombo. And many would argue he was the original giant killer because he was really the reason for the Mr. Olympia competition having an over 200 and an under 200 category. Um, a lot of people would say he is the prime reason for that. And obviously he was well known for being the training partner of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now his height was only five foot five inches tall um, or about 165 centimeters. And his contest weight was roughly 185 pounds or only 84 kilograms. So he would win the lightweight category or the under 200 category at the Olympia two years in a row in 1974 and 1975. Then in 1976, he would also win the under 200, but he would win the overall, defeating the heavyweights Ken Waller and Mike Katz, becoming one of the first real giant killers of the sport, an under 200 guy, you know, beating the much bigger, taller, over 200 guys. Now, the fascinating thing about Franco Colombo is not only was he the pound for pound best bodybuilder in 1976, despite the fact that he was only five foot five, he was also pound for pound one of the strongest bodybuilders of all time and certainly one of the strongest bodybuilders of the 1970s. So in 1977, he competed in the World's Strongest Man competition where he placed fifth, despite the fact that he was injured during the competition. So obviously nowadays, you see World's Strongest Man competitors that are 400 plus pounds. Franco Colombo went into that competition in the 180 and still managed to place fifth at the world's strongest man. So an insanely, you know, just genetically gifted guy in Franco Colombo. And also despite the fact that his training partner Arnold Schwarzenegger was much bigger and taller than him, Franco outlifted him in every single one of the major powerlifting lifts, the bench press, the squat, and the deadlift. All of Franco's lifts were higher than Arnold's. Boasting a massive 750 pound deadlift or 340.2 kilograms. And then Franco Colombo would also come out of retirement in 1981 to win the Olympia again for a second time, um, beating guys like Chris Dickerson, Tom Platts, Roy Callender, guys that are much bigger than him, proving once again that he is the giant killer. So the second guy on my list is coming out of that same era from the 1970s, but he would compete much later on um, into the 90s, unlike Franco Colombo. So this guy's name was Danny Padilla. And this guy was actually my personal favorite of all these giant killers that I'm going to mention in this video, because Danny Padilla was only five foot two inches tall, or about 157.5 centimeters. And his competition weight was only between 165 and 175 pounds, or between 74.8 and 79.4 kilograms. So in terms of both height and weight, this guy was a very, very small bodybuilder, but his conditioning, his aesthetics, his proportion, his symmetry, his balance, everything was so good. He was able to win a number of major titles and defeat a lot of guys that were much bigger than himself. And of course, his actual nickname was the Giant Killer. So he would start winning major titles in 1975, so one year before Franco won his Olympia. Um, so Danny Padilla's first major victory was the Mr. USA competition where he won the short division, but then he would also win the overall, again, beating guys that were much bigger and taller than himself. In 1977, he would do the same thing at the Mr. America competition. He would win the lightweight division, but then he would also win the overall, again, beating guys that were much bigger than himself. Now, many people would say Danny Padilla's best Olympia appearance was at the 1981 Mr. Olympia. Now, this is the year that Franco won. I mentioned this earlier. A lot of people believe that Danny Padilla actually deserved to win the 1981 Mr. Olympia. However, in 1981, Danny Padilla happened to place fifth. Again, weighing less than 170 pounds, he beat guys like Joseph Wilcos, Dennis Tinarino, Samir Banut, Roger Walker, Ed Corney, Mike Katz, Ken Waller. Um, so an amazing lineup of guys that he defeated at that Olympia. And arguably, he should have been much higher. Um, in my opinion, if not winning that Olympia, he should have at least been second or third um, and certainly not fifth at that show. 
as you guys can see from the pictures here, the reason why Franco Colombo, a lot of people will say he didn't deserve to win, was that at that year's Mr. Olympia, Franco had a very bad case of gynecomastia, which is the you know appearance of breast tissue around the nipples, kind of that puffy nipple look, and also the fact that Franco's legs didn't really look up to par as they used to, probably as a result of that leg injury from the 1977 World's Strongest Man competition. Now, I think you could have made a, an argument either way for Tom Platts or Danny Padilla to win that show, but personally, I prefer Danny Padilla. And unlike Franco, Danny would continue his competitive career into the year 2000, where he would compete at the Masters Olympia and place 10th. And the last Masters Olympia he would do um, prior to that was in 1994, where he placed 7th. He also very briefly did a stint in Vince McMahon's WBF, the World Bodybuilding Federation that Vince McMahon founded. It only lasted for about two years. He competed in the 1991 WBF Grand Prix, where he placed 10th. So Danny Padilla, my personal favorite of the giant killers. Now, next on the list, we have Rich Gaspari. Now, Rich Gaspari certainly wasn't as short or as small as Danny Padilla or Franco Colombo. Rich Gaspari was actually about five foot eight, and his competition weight was about 225 pounds on stage. Now, Rich Gaspari's nickname was the Dragon Slayer. I guess that's because the giant killer was already taken, but two very similar nicknames. Now, Rich Gaspari was known for a lot of things. Number one would be his conditioning. So he was one of the first bodybuilders to come in with this crazy level of conditioning. Um, he knew he wasn't going to be one of the bigger guys, so he focused on being one of the most shredded and striated guys. In fact, he was the first known bodybuilder on record to come into a competition with striated glutes, and he set the bar so much higher for the other guys after he did that. And that's when the judges started looking for you know every single muscle to be striated and conditioned, including the glutes. So he definitely set a new bar in terms of what bodybuilders were expected to come in as in terms of conditioning. He's also known for being one of the most vascular bodybuilders of that era. So he competed primarily in the 1980s. His training partner was uh, Lee Haney, who was obviously an eight-time Mr. Olympia. And he was a three-time runner-up at the Olympia in 1986, 1987, and 1988. Obviously to Lee Haney all of those years. And in some cases, he gave up maybe 40 pounds to Lee Haney at some of those shows, so much smaller than him, but his conditioning, again, was what gave him the edge. Also noteworthy is that Rich Gaspari was the first man ever to win the Arnold Classic, so the first Arnold Classic ever held was in 1989. Rich Gaspari won that show. Definitely a major piece of bodybuilding history right there. So the final man on my list of the best giant killers of all time would be Lee Labrada. So Lee Labrada was a man who competed in the 80s and 90s, um, and his competition weight was only between 185 and 195 pounds on stage, or between 83.9 and 88.5 kilograms. He was only 5 foot 6 inches tall. So the impressive thing about Lee Labrada was the fact that he placed within the top four at the Mr. Olympia for seven years in a row, um, which is a feat that has only been duplicated by Arnold Schwarzenegger. He also holds 22 professional bodybuilding titles, including the IFBB Mr. Universe competition. He would also win the 1986 IFBB Night of Champions, and his best Olympia placings would be in 1989 and in 1990, where he placed second place both of those years. And both of those second place finishes would be to the great Lee Haney. So that's the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. That is my list of my favorite giant killers um, throughout bodybuilding history. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any guys that you would add to this list. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.